Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm excited to show some of the upcoming features of uh, Viverica platform, um, sorry, of the uh, next version coming out soon of the platform and highlight some of the new features we have. And this is a short session. I see my time ticking down, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, but I should have a few minutes at the end to answer any questions. Um, and of course, you can come to our booth anytime. You know where it is. It had the giant line uh, and talk to someone from the product team. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to start with a mostly blank slate, uh, install the platform from scratch, and then show some typical workflows uh, you might see. So Viverica platform is built to be a Kubernetes native application. So both the platform and your Flink applications run on Kubernetes. Um, typically, uh, then a user will install the platform using Helm. Um, this is a popular Kubernetes package manager for um, deploying applications um, and uh, for anything that runs on Kubernetes. And no need to write anything down. All this will be in the docs, uh, all, uh, everything I show here. So here we go. Actually, I should do this. Good to clear that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create two Kubernetes namespaces, uh, one of which will be for the platform itself, just called VVP. It already, already exists because I forgot to do my homework here. There we go. We can do one of these. Um, and then I'm going to create one for the jobs. And the reason I create two is uh, in Kubernetes, it, it's often a good idea to separate your workloads uh, in different namespaces. It's kind of the atomic p uh, isolation piece for application workloads in Kubernetes. Um, and so it's just kind of a best practice to deploy this software in one and have your jobs in another. In fact, you can use multiple jobs namespaces uh, in a production environment. Cool. So um, now I'm actually going to kick off the Helm installation. Um, and I'll use this command right here. And then I'll kind of talk about what's going on. So running this, there it goes. So a Helm installation, as you saw in this command, is um, configured using what's called a values file. It's a YAML document that helps you parameterize everything. So I'm going to run through that now real quick. Um, there's not a ton here. You're, you're looking at about 80% of this file, but I'll start from the top. So uh, in this case, I want to turn on authentication authorization um, to emulate a real, real life deployment. So I turn on uh, auth here. Um, I also specify who the administrators are. So they're the ones who can create and manage namespaces for Verica platform namespaces within the platform. Uh, in this case, I prefix it with group, um, and that's a group that's coming from um, our authentication provider. Uh, the platform, the only provider that's supported now is OIDC, um, which even if you don't recognize it, it's very super commonly used. It's really easy to use, set up, for instance, Google Auth, even Facebook Auth, if you want Facebook Auth for your uh, for Verica platform uh, deployment. Um, and these are all just a bit some parameters there, um, a secret, um, a few just parameters. The next thing here is blob storage. So in the next release of the platform, um, there's the ability to configure blob storage once, and that's used for uh, your Flink job artifacts, the jars that you run, as well as checkpoints and save points and uh, HA storage. Um, in, for this demo, I'm using Min.io, which is an S3 compatible uh, object store. And so I've configured that here. Uh, but so S3 is, will be supported as well as um, Azure blob storage. The credentials are here. Um, they're not inside the standard config because they go into a secret in Kubernetes. Um, next thing is just uh, telling the installation to set up the jobs namespace with the right permissions so that the platform can work within it. And then finally, I'm going to turn on a couple of demo components for logging and metrics uh, to kind of show the, the full functionality there. So if we take a look now, looks like everything's up and running. So I'm going to port forward and toggle over to the platform. So I need to log in. This is uh, Keycloak open source uh, 
auth and OIDC provider. And here we are. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do here is uh, set up a namespace for the demo. Uh, there's already a default one here, but you know we need to show everything. So I'm going to call this one demo. And we need to give it uh, some owners. In this case, I'm going to use the same as the administrators, VVP admins, to make sure that I ha still have access. Good, that's created. Um, also, for something that I'll show later, I'm going to add another uh, member to this uh, namespace with different permissions. They're just only going to be a viewer. Um, and that'll be another group here, VVP viewers. Um, there are a few other things supported. You could address a specific user um, or even give uh, anyone who can log into the system access using system authenticated. There we are. Uh, next thing I need to do is upload uh, the job that I want to run. Uh, you can, of course, like the uh, previous versions of the platform, you can always reference um, ob uh, jars anywhere else you want as long as you get the credentials in and there's access from the platform. So you could use an HTTP URI, for example. But in this case, I've got one right here. And I'm going to upload that. All right, looks good. Uh, the last thing I, can, I need to do before creating a deployment is to create a deployment target. Uh, and this very briefly tells the platform what Kubernetes namespace that we're going to use for our job. And so in this case, I'm going to just call it default. And PVP, you see this warning, you know, gently suggesting that you use a different namespace than the platform itself, but nothing stops you. Jobs. There we go. Uh, now, finally, I'm going to create a deployment here. So there's a, bit, a lot to take in on this screen, but um, once the release happens, you can grab the trial and try it out for yourself. I'm going to call it demo. There's not a lot you actually have to, have to fill in here. Uh, I need to make it stateful because it's Flink should be stateful. Uh, here, um, you'll see this is the jar I uploaded. And for illustration purposes, I'm going to start with Flink 1.8. All right. So uh, the deployment's been created, uh, but I haven't started it yet. Um, the platform uses a kind of, you can think of it as a declarative model for these somewhat similar to Kubernetes if you've used it, um, in that you tell the platform the state you want things in, and it will make it happen. So in this case, I haven't told it that I want it to be running, but now I do. Um, and in the background, uh, the platform will start actually running this uh, deployment. Um, do want to point out the nomenclature here. So there's a deployment, and there's a job. Um, and I, we, I definitely apologize when there's some overloaded terms here. It's a bit hard to avoid them. Uh, but so a deployment represents a single Flink application uh, along with its configuration. And then a job is a particular execution of that deployment. So at any given time, there's only one job or none if the, jo if the deployment is stopped. Um, so I'll note that mo pretty much everything you see here, I entered in the previous screen when I created the job. I didn't actually configure checkpoint storage or, or things like that. Um, but if we go over to the actual instantiated job, you'll see that there's a lot more. Um, and these are the aspects that the platform is configuring automatically. So when I gave it that um, blob storage URI at the beginning, that VVP demo bucket, um, this particular job has been pre-configured with the checkpoints and safe points directories. Um, in addition, we have uh, the metric, a metrics reporter automatically configured um, and any credentials that are needed already in there. So this job is running. It's looking good. Um, briefly, just going to show the logs here. If you've used Kibana, nothing new here. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time. Uh, this is just a, a demonstration to show how uh, you're, you can get things like logging automatically configured. So there's our log output. Uh, additionally, metrics. Um, so the, if you enable the metrics demo, uh, it does come with a pre-built dashboard. Um, it's very general. It's meant to be, it's, a, it's fairly opinionated. It's just kind of some useful metrics that should apply to any Flink job. So you see completed checkpoints, records out, um, and a few more metrics. 
uh, no, no restarts, so the job is running smoothly. Um, uh, the platform can coordinate taking save points manually, um, if you wish. Oops, I wanted to click here first. But you can see that there's a save point in action right now. Um, and there it goes, it completes. Um, and if I go over to the Flink UI, we all know and love, we can see that um, there was a, the save point was successfully taken. So now, um, one of the kind of the key features of the platform originally, uh, this was this was here before, um, was that it can coordinate upgrades of your jobs for you. Um, upgrade in this sense is anytime you change sub, uh, key configuration. If you change the main arguments, for example, of your your deployment, um, that cause, will cause a, an upgrade to occur. Um, you can disable that if you wish and do that manually. In this case, uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to upgrade from Flink 1.8 to 1.9. Also add a uh, surprise here. That's not a good surprise. Uh, and I'm going to apply these changes. Cool. Yeah, so there we go. The um, upgrade has started here. Um, because I said this is a stateful deployment, um, the first thing it does is take a save point. Um, then it shuts down and restarts the, with the new configuration. So you can see that there was a, a, the save point taken here. Um, one feature that you can actually do, um, it's kind of handy, is that you can revert to one of these save points that you took in the uh, past, including for suspension. Um, you can also create a new deployment in, in the stopped state from that save point. So in this, well, that's what I just did. I forked the deployment and reverted it to a save point. Um, this is, could be useful. Uh, you change some parameters. You maybe you write your results to a different bucket, uh, and you can experiment uh, using the state from your live application. So uh, now the uh, new deployment is up and running. Um, here's the new newfangled 1.9 Flink UI. Uh, and it's looking good here. Now let's take a look at the, that metrics dashboard again. Um, and unfortunately, though predictably, we see some failures happening here. Uh, and that's because I turned on that flag that uh, makes the job fail after 10 seconds. Uh, and then the, the flink restart strategy applies in this case. It recovers from checkpoint, uh, just as you'd expect. Um, let's see. I think the, the only tab I missed here was the, the job graph, which is uh, uh, just a quick look at uh, something that people commonly look at in the Flink UI itself. Um, so you can kind of get a closer look here. Very close. Uh, just to uh, come back to one thing I did earlier, uh, I, made, I set up uh, both admins and viewers as users within this namespace. And if I, so if I log in back as a normal user, um, you'll see that some capabilities are now unavailable. Then the, uh, the last thing that I want to cover is that the API um, for the platform um, is documented using a Swagger spec um, for JSON APIs. Um, and, so, uh, and then if you go to just the platform slash Swagger, you can um, explore the API. Um, put in sample values. It'll give you the curl command to run that yourself, and it can be useful if you're trying to set up any kind of automation. So in this case, I'm going to list the uh, deployments within that namespace, and this is the output here. Uh, I'm going to ignore most of it, just grab this ID, and go down to this other operation, patch, which will let us update that um, deployment. So I'm going to fill this in. YAML's a bit easier to type. Deployment ID, namespace, and I would like to have this job be in the canceled state. So right now, you can see it's running. I'm going to say state canceled. And 403, what happened? Of course, we're logged in not as our administrator anymore. Um, and so, of course, the API <laughs> enforces the access control that we expect. Uh, if I go back here, I log out, back in. Oh, 
Here we are again. Everything's back. I re-execute this request, 200. And you can see that it's now in the canceled state. Um, yeah, I think that's actually the end of my script here. And we have a few minutes for any questions or follow-ups you might have. Um, and I'm happy to go into any more detail here if anyone would like it. Um, so let's thank our speaker first.